All right, we got a treat for you for Emprise Consulting Corner. We have the the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Savage, the founder of Emprise Technologies. Um, so we thought today we would do something a little bit different. I want to walk through the origin story or have Mark walk through the origin story of Emprise and to give everyone an understanding of how we started, why we started, where we are today. And this will be really one episode of probably a many uh, just the of him and I since we both like to talk. He you know, <laughs> has more wisdom than I do. Uh, so I wanted to get him on here. So good morning, afternoon, Mark. Good morning, Matt. <laughs> so yeah, can you maybe just talk through how you, you know, how Emprise was founded, what got you to that decision and, you know, we go from there. Well, you know, it was really, really two major factors. And one was something I didn't like, and one was something that I wanted to make happen. Um, so I, I uh, um, when I get, got out of school, I uh, stalled around for a couple of years in the Peace Corps and then came back to the States and, um, took up a uh, job at a little consulting company and uh, that eventually got me in touch with the Credit Bureau of Toledo where really this saga saga starts and um, they were um, they had a collection operation and they were in um, a credit reporting and mortgage business and I was their first information technology manager and so uh, I wasn't particularly qualified to do that work except I was really into it and really liked it and loved the technology and um, didn't realize what a data intensive business the collections or the arm industry really is. And so um, we spent several years gearing up that company to solve the technology problems, uh, onboarding clients and um, generating good client reporting and drawing in all the data ne necessary to to really make the company function, uh, skip tracing and letters and you know all that, all that stuff, and it was hard, really hard, um, and that uh, that didn't seem right to me. Uh, and then I went to work for, I uh, had the opportunity to go to work for a company uh, on the East Coast, uh, a, a large company that was doing some really interesting things and. They had just uh, uh, con converted over to a collection system that we were working with, Ontario Systems Facts, and they had had a really rough go of it. And so I was brought in to kind of figure out how to solve that problem and also to um, uh, also to build a staff because uh, they really didn't have people who knew the, knew the technology um, or how to solve those types of problems. So I, I did that for them, and uh, they sold the company uh, to to another company that eventually sold it sold it to NCO, and I uh, I got a, a a check in my hand, a separate check, and um, I, what I really wanted to do with that is I wanted to start a company that would do the same kinds of things I had done in these last two companies, but for a broad client base. As part of the problem I was experiencing is when I asked, when I tried to find people to talk to about, yeah, how do you do this stuff? How do you solve these problems? What are you guys thinking about? There was nobody to talk to. There was there was nobody talking about this stuff. And and the insights that I was putting putting together, I thought were pretty cool, but you know, I I, I didn't know. You know, I didn't really know. You know, sometimes you know, oh, I've really got this, and good stuff is going on. Uh, I. I, I didn't. I thought, you know, this is probably what what people need. And the real the real challenge and what what we built the the company around was the ability to understand the business requirements and then just do the work. Um, and that was the real real gap that I saw. And the real gap was was I, IT folks just wanted to do the technology work. They didn't want to talk to business or understand the business. And it always felt like, much like the accounting department was, the IT department was very separate. They were part of corporate. And they just didn't have the didn't have the link with the business. And I was really interested in what made the business tick. And in order to solve these problems well, we really need to understand that. So that was kind of the kind of the charter of the the company. Um, the other piece was, when um, when that company was sold, 
and I had recruited the staff there, I lost the ability to take care of that staff to look after their destinies and to grow them as professionals and, and do that. And that was, that was devastating to me. I, it was like, I've never again, you know, sort of, right. sort of, sort of experience. And um, uh, I talked to my girlfriend at the time who later became my wife and partner in the company. And she said, you know, um, if you start a company, then you're really in charge. I was like, I had been kicking around the ideas, but I hadn't quite pulled the trigger. And that was the, that was a piece that really motivated it. So That's, shockingly. Yeah, that was, this is going to ask. Question. No kids, I assume, at that point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, no, no kids. Kids didn't come along for, uh, uh, let's see, the oldest is 12 now. And we've been in business 21 years for nine years later. So had a, a lot of time to get the business going. Thank goodness, because you need that kind of time right so was your then girlfriend were you guys living together something you know i think of me even of if i'm single matt no kids starting a company you need to have some income somewhere i n no i had this i had this teeny tiny apartment um uh in the neighborhood right by where we live now um and it was a, a little studio apartment and i think it was I think it might have been five hundred dollars a month or something. Oh. Yeah, I mean it was really it was it was awesome, and uh, um, I had I had a computer and Kim had her laptop and we had all the technology we needed. I you know a, a little I think internet was thirty dollars a month or something then, and those were my expenses. <laughs> so so uh, uh, the the two of us and the cat worked out of the apartment and. Um, did that for uh, several several years, get, getting going. I, you know, it's, it's, it's not like I was really missing anything because I wasn't doing anything besides working. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. It, was, it was basically like having uh, an executive office, you know, um, with, a, with a, you know, couch to sleep on. <laughs> and that was, yeah, that was, that was it. Yeah, no, it's, was getting your first, you know, your clients, because if you're, I mean, you have some relationships, right? But you're not, you, well, you don't have. Well, you know, I, I knew the folks at Ontario Systems and I went to them and I said, hey, I get this idea. What do you, what do you think? I think there's cli there are clients out there who need, you know, to have a long-term relationship, to have some continuity. But they, they've they got some staff, but, you know, I, I don't want to work for just one company. I, I want to work for a whole bunch of companies. Right. And they said, you know, that sounds like a great idea. It's not something we're doing. Um, <clears throat> go and do that, and you know, we'll see what we can do to help you out. And boy, they sure did. They, they, um, I, I did a mailing to I think maybe a hundred contacts that I had. We ended up getting two clients from that first mailing, and you know, then it was word of mouth. And um, uh, the industry is so small that once you do a little bit of good work for some folks, then they talk. And yeah. I, I remember, remember doing, doing some work for a, a company in Chicago, and uh, I just completed a real big project. Uh, they, were, they were converting onto, onto facts, and they had all these interfaces they need to do, and staff get trained, and, and all this kind of stuff. And this is like, this is like year, two of the, year two of the company. And then I get a call from this other company. And it's uh, um, uh, it's a tension down in Texas, and they say, "Hey, that guys, the client you're working for now, they gave me your name." Really? Yeah. Well, you got the same interface. We were at a client conference. We were talking about it. I, you think you can get that interface done for us, kind of right away? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I just did the same thing for these other guys. I'm right. sure I can do it for you. <laughs> I, I was incredibly, incredibly confident, and I said. After after I got the work done, I, I asked the guy. I said, um, "You know, you guys are competitors. How come they gave you my name?" Oh, small world, man. <laughs> I was like, "Okay," <laughs> uh, and that was that was actually a, a little piece of mentoring to me that that when you've got this small knit community where people have worked with each other and started companies together and done that stuff, if you just do a really good job and um, work hard and you get it 
then they're going to find stuff for you to do. And, and they did. Yeah, no, it is small, like we know. And word of mouth is still a big part of, I know how we get clients and oh, yeah. uh, I've been saying forever and I think it's coming, you know, a lot of people see it and believe it now that it's you know, all about relationships. You might be the cheapest or the most expensive, whatever it may be, but you obviously have to do a good job, but you're not going to work with someone who you don't like and you, you know, right. And you see a call on the calendar, you're like, oh, can I get out of this, please? <laughs> right. Right. So you and don't want to be those people. And you know, I think we've we've done a good job staying true to what the original vision for the company was, was to have people who were really, you know, I, I think the term I've been using recently is conversational technologists. Right. People who could talk the business, talk the technology, uh, had hands in really both worlds realizing that there aren't two worlds there's obviously just one um and and we've now got a staff of those folks um and that's why uh, when people get a taste of what we're offering they stick with them we've got some clients we've had for i i i don't know we've got some clients that we had from our first couple you know right um, they some of the folks have bounced around to different places, but I'm, I'm thinking about uh, uh, one of our clients in in Indiana. Um, he's been a client for 19 or 20 years. You know, right. no, that's yeah, that shows relationships and doing a good job and and all that where it counts. So what, um, a couple last questions I was thinking of. So we'll start the company. What was maybe the biggest challenge or the biggest stress that kept you up at, at night, whether it's, you know, when it first started or, you know, weeks, months into it, years? Yeah, um, you know, I was really filling a vacuum. I was, I was right that there was this real need um, and there was nobody else doing this work. So, uh, a matter of fact, several of the other people who are in the industry kind of doing the work that that we're doing um, uh, that are like us are really modeled after what we're doing. Those folks were previous clients of ours that saw, hey, this looks like a real cool model. Maybe at some point uh, I'll just go out and do that kind of thing myself. Um, right. So, so um, it, it was it was a real unique opportunity to have this this burning need in this industry that was big enough to support you know the work i wanted to do and for us to grow a grow a business on so you know when you ask what was the things what are the things that kept me up at night nothing i it it was i wasn't in a hurry mm -hmm. to grow the business um you know, i think i read one of those you know starting your own business books back <laughs> then and it said whatever you do don't create a bunch of expenses for right. stuff and i had nothing for experience. Right. I mean, just nothing. And it, it it took all the pressure out of, oh, got to really get a client. And, and when we had a client with a big project, we just work day and night and weekends. I remember, I remember Kim, uh, one of Kim's friends saying, hey, um, you know, we really like to see you this weekend. And she's like, we got this really big project. I said, well, you're not going to work at work on it all the time i mean would you have time for dinner and she's like uh when it's done we will <laughs> i mean we just really work we'd work you know 16 18 hour days and our clients were like i, I can't believe you got it done so quickly how could have you done that well you know this weekend we put in a week's worth of work and last week we put in a week's worth of work that's two weeks worth of work you know <laughs> we can get an awful lot lot done in a week and it was you know it was fun and i was still I was still learning stuff, you know, I wasn't, yeah. um, I, I understood it, but you, you know, you don't really understand it until you're on your own, you got to solve a problem and there's, you know, a timeline and there's nobody else talking, to, man, you just got to figure yeah. it out. So yeah, no, you're in doing it and that's it. Getting started is right. the best, I think, to ease yeah. any stress or anxiety. Yeah. So one thing I don't, we didn't do in the beginning for the people who actually have no idea who we are, Emprise, you want to do a 30 second, hey, here's what we do, here's what we specialize in. 
sure. I'll, probably I'll help. What I, can do. I, I probably won't do it as well as, as well as you would, but, um, you know, M- M- Empire's technology is, um, uh, obviously a technology company that primarily is in the, the collections or their accounts receivable management space, uh, also in the uh, financial services sector and healthcare. And we do um, business process consulting and um, general data development uh, work. Uh, we support many of the collection systems that are out there and um, also some real cool business process automation software called called Decisions that we, we work in and uh, have a, a bunch of clients that are working on. We've got a pretty diverse, pretty diverse practice, uh, what, about 30 people work at Emprise right now. Um, and we're kind of making things happen in that area. I would, I, and I would say the, the distinguishing thing, distinguishing, I think you can get that out. The distinguishing thing about Emprise is that um, we are these, or we strive to be these conversational technologists that, right. you know, understand the business, we'll take the time to learn all the subtleties, and then we'll just do the work. But doing the work, that's like the bonus. <laughs> that's the extra. We love when we get to do that. It's the figuring it out that's hard and requires patience and discipline. And that's 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 really the work that we do is the figuring it out. Yep. No, I think the last few years has been maybe five years of more of those strategic conversations, you know, enjoying technology, being yeah. Hopefully, likable to people, but Hopefully. being able to talk and have a good time, you know, pre COVID traveling, now Teams yeah. meetings, just getting to know people, you know, that's my highlight of getting to know them, you know, personally and professionally, and and being able to help them, you know, when they're thinking big picture projects and they think, oh, let me see the Empire guy, Emprise guys now. Yeah, you know, it, you know, it goes back to that original vision for the company that, that, you know, there are people that are in these little silos, and, and they're often they're not very little, um, called the company they work for. And what the input they get are the people around them, and occasionally a voice from the wilderness will show up and say, what are you guys doing? Right. <laughs> that's, that seems awesome, or that seems crazy, or somewhere in between. And often we're that voice, because, you know, we're... By design, we're solving problems for you know 50 plus clients a month, and that that results in us having a real good sense of what's going on in technology and also what's going on in the industry. So, you know, our our clients keep us educated, and we therefore are in a spot to educate our, educate our clients. So it's a virtuous cycle, right? Yep. No. Nope. Well, thanks. I think it was good. Good information. A good of many meetings and discussions so what uh what are you doing these days what are you reading what are you listening to you doing anything exciting that people care about um you know i don't know that i'm doing anything particularly exciting (laughs) i've I've got a i got a house full of kids that are uh ages 12 through 6 there are four of them and they are they take uh every spare moment of my time to uh, be with them play with them and help them out what they're doing and uh they are they are mostly mostly what i'm doing and then you know we're kind of trying to run this business too right. so right. <laughs> that, that, that sort of sort of keeps me busy yeah no i hear you i hear you well the reach mark you know, i'll put everything in the the notes on the youtube video and on our page but it's market enterprise one m-a-r-c and thank you sir and if anyone has any questions reach out to me or mark or go to our website at emprise1.com thank you and uh we will talk later awesome man thanks have a good one